I think we should be careful in the language we use because it shapes how we perceive reality. This is not the worst country in the world. This is not even close to being the worst country in the world. This is a great country going through a terrible time. Mm. And I think there's a difference in that distinction. And I think it's really important to remember that. The reason it's important to remember that is because it then reminds you of where you want to go and where you can go. The only reason we are complaining, the only reason we're having issues, whether it's load shedding or whether it's corruption or whether it's talking about you know, inept politicians, etc., is because we have a standard that clearly we have remembered in moments in time. Mm. Otherwise, we wouldn't complain. Mm. You can't complain about not having you electricity if you never had electricity. Yeah. So that means we know we can get back to it. And so, you know, I've, I've, I'm, an, I'm an eternal optimist. I've been that in my life. I've been that, you know, in my family. I've been that, you know, for my country. And I think we have to push in that direction. It doesn't mean that we have to be delusional. It doesn't mean that we have to ignore what we're seeing. But I really think, I really think that we, we, we have to try to remember that at all costs because mm. if we give up and say the country is gone and we treat it as if it is gone, we then become part of the problem. And I honestly mean this on, on even the lowest level. You know, I think we, we take for granted how much on the ground each person is contributing to how a country feels. You're with Clement Maniatella. 702. Dumelang, it's 9.09. Welcome to the Clement Maniatella Show. I hope you're well this morning. My name is Trevor Noah, your co-host for this hour. We start the show with the 702 open line. Call us now on 011-883-0702 or send us a WhatsApp voice note on 072-702-1702. Be the first caller now to talk to me. Clement, what else are we looking at on the show today? Ha! Huh, people are probably screaming right now in their cars. <laughs> okay, co-host, what else are we looking at? On the show today, between 10 and 11 o'clock, we'll be in conversation with political analyst Koko Obrimachikli. He's a brilliant, brilliant analyst who's going to help us understand the state of our politics and where things are headed. And I think um, we're bringing him to assess the state of the big parties, their leaders, the recently formed multi-party convention and their chances for next year's election. So um, that's going to be a conversation between 10 and 11 o'clock. At 11 o'clock, we do a World of Work feature. And today we're discussing imposter syndrome and low self-esteem in the workplace and how you can power through that. And then we wrap up the show at 11.30 with a health and wellness feature. And today we'll be discussing addiction to social media and why you need to be worried about that. So that's the show coming, coming up, up over, over the, the next three, three hours. hours. 7.02. Let's walk the talk. 011-883-0702. The WhatsApp line is 072-702-1702. Linda in Johannesburg. Good morning. Hi. Hi, Linda. Hi, Trevor. <laughs> How are you this morning? Welcome. Welcome. I can't wait to see you today. I'm so excited and I can't wait to see you tonight. I cannot wait to see you tonight. I'll see you there. It's going to be the first show, opening <laughs> night. We're going to make it a good one. Oh, I hope so. Kevin, one of my best moments was uh, at the Kevin Hart show when you walked in. It was wow. a surprise for all of us. Such a good We didn't expect that. Hey, Linda, we didn't expect that. Wow. Yeah, that was incredible. And also, um, <laughs> no, definitely. And I have your, uh, walking out of the Oscars, uh, right after the Oscar Awards, and you are bumping into Buster Rhymes. Oh, man. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that moment. Uh, I watched that video. Uh, yeah, I've watched it a couple of times. Wow, Trevor, you are you make us proud. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank Linda, you. Thank you so much for the call. Your voice. Your station. Your open line. Walk the talk with Clement Maniatella on 702. Trevor Noah, how are you doing, man? I'm doing well now that I'm here. <laughs> what happened? Is I was, it traffic? Did you did your cars I, get stuck on I the think, road? I think we should we should we should come up with a new term. Yeah. That goes beyond traffic. Because traffic implies that there were cars that couldn't move because there was a congestion. Yeah. But when we get to the point where the traffic lights are out, there's a roadblock, cars are stopped in the middle of the road. During peak hour traffic. Yeah, guys, we can't call that traffic. That? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's like saying my plane didn't arrive because there was a delay. <laughs> then you look and you go, what was the delay? Then you're like, no, it crashed. 
there's a different word for a delay that's permanent and a delay that's temporary. Yeah. When last did you deal with this kind of mayhem on the road? Well, you know what's interesting is, you know, New York has mayhem. The yeah. difference is, though, you can jump out of the car. And walk. Walk, ride yeah. a bicycle, jump in. Or take the sub. Yeah, j- jump in the sub. But the subway is not, um, they're having a lot of trouble with the subway right now. <laughs> really? You wouldn't take the subway. That's going to be chaos. <laughs> no, everyone takes the subway. You, no, come on. I Trevor, promise you. Everyone, you cannot get on a subway. Forget me. Everyone takes the subway. You everyone. write with everyone. Keanu um, Reeves takes the subway. You yeah, name it. Yeah. Mega stars. Forget yeah. me. Mega Even stars CEOs take the subway. New York everyone takes the subway. the subway. Yeah, everyone takes it. Yeah. So there's different ways to get there. But I'm here now. I'm very happy. Thank <laughs> you for having me. Thank you for coming through. Thank you so much. How does it feel to be back home? I mean, you have a show tonight. Yes. At the Sunbed Arena. Yes, you must we be do. excited. Really excited. Really, really excited. It's been it's been overwhelming, you know. Um I mean, this is this is not my first time coming home. It's mm. my first time coming home to do shows in many years. Mm. Um, you know, I, I come home frequently. I've been home frequently. The only time, the biggest gap where I wasn't home was during COVID. Obviously, you couldn't travel in and out of certain places. Yeah. But other than that, no, I, I, I come back. You know, it's just nice to be back doing shows. It's nice to be back performing again for South African audiences. Yeah. You know, Cape Town was phenomenal. Durban was was amazing. But, you know, coming here to, to, to Joburg and Pretoria, that's... That's, that's where I started my thing. I've been reading a lot of reviews about the people that have already seen you in Cape Town um, and in Durban. And I just want to read one because... Uh, There's reviews? One. Yeah, like people who have been to your shows <laughs> and they didn't get paid to write the reviews or anything. Um, but someone said, um, Trevor Noah remains in tune with the South African experience, covering a range of themes and concepts, including load shedding, crime, travel, immigration culture identity belonging the notion of home wow. his latest south african tour taps into these deep underbellies of what makes the nation tick how do you still keep tabs of what's happening here at home so you can still be so relatable to the audience i mean uh, first and first and foremost it's always home you know that's the first thing you know it's 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 always it's always yes you know like now you'll go my home is in new york is in my my house my house my domicile etc but when you think of where your heart is you know that's always going to be south africa and my friends are here my family's here so the conversations we have are about what's happening here i follow the politics i follow the news the only things you have to experience for yourself are things like widespread load shedding into <laughs> you know a traffic jam into you know a, a, a roadblock which, by the way, I didn't know that now they're checking your water and lights Aye, at a roadblock. Aye, Yo, guys. And then they're like, are you paying or what? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, um, by the way, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to go back to your calls. 011-8830702. WhatsApp's on 072 You can watch this interview live on Facebook. Uh, so go to our 702 Facebook account if you want to check it out live. And I'm hopefully I'll go live on Instagram because some, some of you have asked me to do that. So check out Clement Manantel on Instagram and, and I'll do this li- live. You've achieved so much, man. You, you've done some big stuff. Like This is the, the kind of stuff that you dream of. And I wonder if you sometimes like poke yourself, you know, just to make sure this is not a dream. Or have you adjusted to the Hollywood global superstar that you are? Or is it still surreal? Look, I'll be honest. There are moments where it's still surreal. Um, there are there are also also many moments where I'm working too hard to take a moment to to poke myself. Mm-hmm. You know, um, contrary to popular belief, I never got into any of the things that I got into for any measure of fame. I love what I do. I love you know stand up comedy is the most Im- important thing for me in terms of performing. I love mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And then presenting television shows is something I've always enjoyed, you know. I've I've, I've always loved combining the elements, you know, whether it's comedy, news, social commentary, all of these things coming together. Mm-hmm. It's what I've always enjoyed. So in a weird way, it's never been my dream. It's just it's it's my work. And then my work happens to be attached to to something that's very outward facing. Yeah. And I always try and explain that to people as I go, if, you know, if I was good at medicine, I would have been a doctor. And then, you know, m- maybe in another universe, doctors would have been people who are quote unquote famous. Yeah. You know, uh, but it's just, this is just yeah. what I like doing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's my trade, it's my craft, it's, 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 it's what I work towards. Um, so yeah, but I, but, I, but I appreciate it because I think there are many people who work in certain fields where they may not get any direct feedback from the people who appreciate what they do. Yeah. You know, why don't you have an accent yet? <laughs> Which accent do you want me to have? American accent. 
I mean, you know, you go know, to America for two weeks and they come back. You know, I've always thought of Can doing, I have a nap, kid? I've, I've always thought of doing that. I've always wanted to come and be like, hey, you know, it's so good to be back in South <laughs> Africa. And, you know, I just want to say Clement, you know, Clement. man, you know, can I just say du- Dumelang, 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 everybody at home. I'm, I'm just having such a great time back home. You know, yeah. this is always where I'm from. And, you yeah. know, Abu Mama, they just, yeah. you know, Abu, Abu, Abu Baba, you know, just everyone out there, you know. I mean, you're deliberate about it. Were you like... No, but uh, no, but my accent. You? So, okay, I do know this. I have noticed that your accent slips when you're in another place for a long time. Yeah. But if you want it to be, it is your accent. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Mina, when I'm in New York and when I'm there for a long time and I don't see my friends from South Africa, my accent can slip a little bit. Like I've noticed sometimes I can say there and the r is too long. <laughs> but the rest of the sentence is South African, <laughs> you know? But um, but otherwise, I mean, this is this is how I speak. Yeah, and this is how you've always. Yeah, been this speaking. is how I speak. You know what I love about what you know you've done, even with your platform, and we'll talk more about the Daily Show later on. Is is how you were so intentional about promoting even South African talent on that platform. I mean, you've invited Zozibini mm-hmm, on the platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've had two. So I think you've had Black Coffee as well, mm-hmm, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken, and not because. You know, you were doing them a favor, but because these are people that are also making big moves. They're phenomenal. What did that mean for you to share that big stage with these brothers and sisters from South Africa? It means it means everything. You know, I remember Black Coffee when he was just blowing up in SA mm. in certain areas, mm. and to then bump into that same name around the world. I mean, now you know, doing Madison Square Garden, yeah. you cannot go anywhere in Europe, South America, Asia, without somebody saying, oh, black coffee, South mm. Africa, oh, black coffee, I love black coffee. Mm. That's amazing. You know, you look at an artist like Nelson Magamo, where this guy is out there doing his thing on his own, you know, essentially on his own terms. Mm. And here he is shaking up the art world. I think that's phenomenal. You know, you look at what Tuso's done in, in Hollywood, it's, it's phenomenal. That's so, crazy. So what I've loved is exactly what you said. I've loved that I get to and I and I got to share a platform with South Africans who are doing exceptional things at, within their fields mm-hmm. and not having anyone be able to say, oh, it's because they're South African, that's why they're on the show. Exactly. It's like, no, that's a bonus for me. That's Right? That's a bonus. Because they're already making big moves as well. So at 11 o'clock, as you heard, we, we're going to be on our World of Work feature talking about the imposter syndrome. Yes. Do you have that? And, and have you had it? I mean, when you took over The Daily Show... Such a big, big, big show. When you did the White House Correspondents' Dinner, which I incredibly enjoyed your set. Thank you. Uh, before Joe Biden made the address, you've hosted the Grammys. I can go on and on. Do you Have you ever had the imposter syndrome? Definitely. Definitely. Be- because I think we take for granted what imposter syndrome is. Yeah. I think what we, what we, what we don't understand is because we are so far removed from the work product, before, because we, we're so far removed from the process, we oftentimes do not know the inner workings of anyone that we appreciate. Mm-hmm. You know, you watch your favorite football players, people like Lionel Messi. I remember discovering that there were many games that Lionel Messi would, would throw up before. He would just, they, they said that he would, he would throw up. All his teammates would talk about this. And you mm-hmm. go, why? And they said, we don't know if it was, he was very nervous, we, but he's Lionel Messi. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you'll hear about about famous, I mean, like some of the best musicians in the world. And before they go on stage, they're having small minor panic attacks mm. before they walk out onto that stage. Yeah. I think we take for granted how disconnected we are from the process. And mm. so what then happens to us is we can find ourselves in those situations. And because nobody has told us mm. what that situation entails, we can then be in a space where we then feel like we don't belong there because we aren't having the inner monologue that matches the outer dialogue that we were experiencing other people with. Jeez, the inner monologue that matches the outer dialogue. <laughs> hey, <laughs> big words in Kosiam. <laughs> <laughs> I know, come on. It's 21 minutes after 9 o'clock. Let's go to some WhatsApp voice notes on 072 Hi, good morning, Trevor. Good morning, Clement. Trevor, you're doing very well for yourself. We South Africans must be very proud of you. Brenda, you love you. Enjoy your day. Bye, baby. Good morning, Mr. Manyate. Hamilton here in Springs. Wow. What an opening by Trevor. That was a good opening. 
I thought I'm listening to a radio, a wrong <laughs> radio station. <laughs> Welcome home, Trevor Hamilton in Springs. Oh, wow. Welcome, Trevor. Oh, it's good to have you on the show and hope we're going to have a blast with Clement. Wow, I'm so excited. Wow, uh, we're also so excited. Okay, let's go to Mpumi in Santon. Mpumi, you calling? Good morning. Hi. Hi, Trevor. Hello, Mpumi. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm so glad to speak with to be speaking to you. I'm actually driving to the office now. Let me pull over. Yeah, no, please pull uh, over. That's a belief, Bumi. <laughs> we don't yeah, want we don't want to listen to an accident in Bumi, please, no? <laughs> yes. So I wanted to tell the story that, you know, last year when I heard that you come into South Africa, mm. I bought the tickets. Thank you. So when I was going online, I realized that, okay, the, I can't see the Joe tickets. I turned it. I thought maybe they sold out. So what I was left was Cape Town and Devon. Because I love Cape Town, I'm like, what the heck? I might as well go and watch Trevano in Cape Town. Mm. And wow. I knew my best friend uh, wouldn't say no to Trevor Noah because we used to follow you around in South Africa. Like, we used to watch all your shows in South Thank Africa. Thank you. Thank you. And I was so happy to be in Cape Town last week. You were amazing. I was so happy. I can't believe you came. Thank you so much. Yeah. So wait, so you never found and tickets I for the Joburg I took, shows? I took leave. Yes, I took leave. I took uh, three days leave. And then we stayed in Stellenbosch, and then we drove to your show, and then we went Yo. back to Stellenbosch, and it was just amazing. I was like, I'll do it for Trevor, because we used to do it in Joburg, so why, why not? Uh, thank That's you so much. You and you did it. I'm glad you did it right, and the we- at least the weather was in our favor that week, so thank you. Yeah, because Cape Town weather lately has been crazy. Man. Yeah, no, no, it was beautiful yeah. that week, so thank you. Wow, that's Bumi. that's a beautiful story. Thank, thank you, Bumi. You. Sebastian in El Dorado, good morning. Good morning, Clemens, and good morning to Trevor. Trevor Sebastian here. Just wanted to find out, don't you have a job for Busisiwe Mkwabane <laughs> in, one, in one of your little stints when you, the woman is unemployed <laughs> at the moment? So I was just thinking, being a South African that you are, Ubuntu. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. She, Madiba's child. She could, be, she could be your opening act. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> well, Sebastian, she wants to be a politician, so I don't oh. know if she'll, she'll fit in there. Maureen in Mamilodi, hi. Hey. Hi, Trevor. Hi. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm so excited. My name is Mam Maureen. I'm phoning from Mami Lodi, but I'm in a car riding to towards uh, the the suburbs in Pretoria. Okay. And I screamed just to hear that it's you. You know, my son just called at quarter to nine uh-huh. and told me that you know what? Soon in seven o two, there's somebody you love. Oh said, wow! Mm. And he said, just. In. Oh, then, wow. You know, uh, when I had your voice, I just dream. Thank you so much. Thank you and so much. I, I felt like, you know, you know, I don't know. I'm just, just like, heaven you don't know. <laughs> and, uh, I just, I just want to bless you oh. and may God give you all the wisdom and oh, wow. to do what you do because you what you do. Oh, Thank you. But I'm not. You know, my Kosa was never that strong. I spoke more Zulu, Zulu. Tswana. Yeah, because so my mom my mom always spoke to me in English and then Kosa she'd hit me with when I was in trouble. <laughs> when you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> like bad, like bad, but like bad, it's, bad, it's Zulu. Yeah. Uh, you still speak it with the brothers? No, I mean, I'll speak it a lot friends. of the time. Yeah, with friends. Um, I think my, my Tswana got stronger. Mm-hmm. You know, because of my my best friend speaks to Anna, and then I think that got stronger. But when I speak it, I I can get into any language. Yeah. So you know, they yeah. fade, they go in and out. One of my favorite stories. It actually happened to me in um in New York. Mm-hmm. I was walking through the streets, and walk past this guy, and he didn't see me, and I I didn't like it. We didn't see each other, but all I heard w- was he just turned, and then he's like, "Hi, man," <laughs> and I turned, and I was like, "Eta," and yeah. he was like, "Eta." <laughs> And then we and I was like, up, 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 up. he's like, 
Yo, show. Now, now in fact, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be like, hey, 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 and dude, there was this moment where you were just like, oh, wow, you know, you're like jumping back into the language. And yeah. Could, I miss it so much. I miss uh, it so much. That's that's so that's so dope. What are you busy with now? Um, When you quit the Daily Show, it took a lot of people by surprise. Yes. It's like, really? Yes. Already? By all, you know, you people, were like, you were doing this. But people say already, eight years. Yeah, when you calculate it cumulative, 2015 to 2020, yeah, 2022. It's, yeah. But it's eight years of incredible success. I appreciate that. Thank you. I don't think it's eight years of incredible success. I think it was mm-hmm. a few years of struggling, which uh-huh. is, you know, part of the journey. You know, it was a few years of, of um, really grinding. There was a time when many people didn't think the show would carry on. They didn't want it on, on air. You see, this is what I mean. It's like the way we, the way we tell stories, mm. I've learned to even be careful of that. It's like, no, I think in the end, and you know, towards the middle of the run, we experienced yeah. a lot of success, and I'm always mm. grateful for that. Mm. But I will never forget how hard it was. I'll never yeah. forget how terrible moments were. I'll never forget how how uncertain the future of the show was. You know, so so yeah. But but you know, it's it's strange. The time I guess flies for many people. For for Mna, I was like, no, guys, it's it's Is it's been long, time? and and ju- doing the show during COVID mm. really exponentially increased how much time it felt like I was doing because now it was years of not going home, years mm-hmm. of not traveling the world, years of not living my life. And I'm a big fan of living life, not just living work. Is that what you're doing now? Yeah. Living life? Definitely. I'm trying what my best. what is that for I'm you? Trying like my best. Traveling the world, doing trying, comedy? Yeah, doing, doing comedy, up. traveling the world, being with family and friends, you know, uh, reclaiming more of my time and then and then finding moments to do passion projects where I can give them my all, mm-hmm. you know, just, just jumping into them. I'm going to be doing a podcast with Spotify and I'm excited for that. You That's know? incredible. Yeah. And, and just, what, what is just that having fun, be about? to be honest, you know, what is the podcast going to be about? Everything I love, Yeah, you know, so everything from current affairs to topics that take us into philosophy yeah. and then chatting to people who are amazing. So everybody from, you know, well, Kerry Washington and, and Bill Gates, and it doesn't matter if anybody wants to have a conversation with me, I would love to have that conversation with them. We'd love to have a conversation with you. So are we invited? I mean, we're having the conversation (laughs) right now. (laughs) So speaking of current affairs, I've always wondered what it takes to do a show like that, The Daily Show. I mean, you take some material that sometimes is heavy. You need to be so knowledgeable. It's like, and I wonder if you switch off because you need to understand the processes in the Congress, in the Senate. You need to understand identity politics in America. There's just so much you need to be able to grasp. Um, what did it take to do a show like that where you must take almost know everything but also be able to take the hot stuff and, and right. make it a little a little bit lighter? So I think the hardest part of doing The Daily Show is that you don't stop and you don't switch off when the show does because you want to be in a space where you can apply some sort of insights and some sort of care to a topic that deserves it, you know. So, so when you're partying with Beyonce at the after party at the Grammy, I'm still you think there's a thing in the back of my head that goes, okay, but make sure when you get in the car <laughs> afterwards, just check the news and make sure because you know what would happen is people would ask me about things. People would, you know, and if I didn't know, I'd say I don't know. But I, I would, I would, I would be a person who's let's say at, on a, on the red carpet at the Oscars or something. Yeah. And every other person is just being asked, what are you wearing? And, oh, oh, what, you know, that's your outfit. Oh, my God, what, that, that looks so amazing. And then I would get there, and then out of nowhere, they would go, they'd be like, so, Trevor, what do you think about what's happening in Oakland right now? And, like, and you don't like, care about what I'm wearing? And you're like, wow, okay. <laughs> I mean, I thought we were just at a party. So, so I think a lot of that felt like a responsibility. Yeah. Um, but I was really lucky that, I, you know, I was by no man, by, 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 by no means an island, you know. Uh, my, I had a big team of super smart people. I'm still friends with many of them. We, we, we still talk about these issues. We still yeah. love jumping into it. Yeah. It's just now I get to breathe. Now I'll spend four days not reading the news. I'll just be like, nope, nothing I'm for me. Off. And then I'll catch up on everything. But now I'm I'm fine not knowing what's happening yeah. for a few days, jump into it, give myself a bit but of space. But you had such intricate knowledge in a foreign country. I mean, you understood the nitty gritty. Yeah, but it was hard. It was it was hard. I mean, when I, when I first got to the US, I would spend maybe... I think it was at, at at the at the peak. Maybe it was eighteen hours a day yeah. working, just eighteen sure. hours a day studying. Okay, what's happening in Congress? What does this bill mean? Who are these people in the Senate? What is this filibuster about? Okay, mm-hmm. who's who's pushing what? Uh, like 
deep, deep, deeply entrenched. That's hectic. You know, studying because it's that's part of the job. Well, look at you now. You have four nominations for the Grammys. Yeah. Congratulations. For the, for the Emmys. Emmys. Yes, yeah. for the Emmys. Uh, congratulations, man. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you so much. Link us to the news headlines. <laughs> you, must, you must do gonna, the time who's be Gladys, Gladys is doing Gladys is doing the yeah, so check the time and then oh, link to go. the old, news old with Gladys it's 9.32 time for the news with Gladys well done, Trevor. Well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, Trevor. This is the 702 open line, a different kind of 702 open line because we're chilling with really one of our best exports, Trevor Noah in studio. And he's taking your calls on 011 883 0702. In fact, we're taking calls now. Professor Ramuti, how are you? Ramuti, Jumela, Trevor. Jumela. Great show. Thanks for a great show. Thank you. Thank My you. My name is Nelo Kotala Haramuti. I'm from Harangua, mm. but I'm teaching. I'm a professor of history at the University of Free State. For the past five years, I was teaching at VET in the School of Education. So these are the students that are training to be teachers, right? Wow. So how do you want to teach history? I will bring your book, um, Born Crime. Wow. Then you I will use it to say, look at how the Noah's mother, Patricia, is my hero. How she defied apartheid. You know, the group areas act, the intermarriage act, you know, all of hey, those things. Hey. So, and, you know, these students, they really enjoyed the way I was bringing. I was not saying you must go and read 50 chapters on this, on the history <laughs> of apartheid. I was bringing Trevor Noah's book and showing them that how you divide it. I really enjoyed it. I had assignment on that for the past five years. Wow. And it was a great way of teaching it. I bought it uh, at UCLA in 2017. Oh, wow. I was visiting there um, in, uh, in November. And I can't wait for you to I have a hard copy. I can't wait for you to, to sign it for me. So we'll, we'll, we'll find a way. We're going to find a way, Professor. Thank you, Prof. We're going to find a way. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, yeah. Professor. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for calling. We've got uh, Raylene from Johannesburg. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you, Mr. Trevenauer? Doing fantastic. Doing fantastic. I'm good. I just want to say good morning to you as well, Clement. This morning, I followed you from the break, the show that you needed to appear on. <laughs> My heart was palpitating for you to get into a stranger's car. I hardly listened to 702, but this morning you got me tuned in. Oh, thank you. And I hope you stay. Must... You must stay after this. <laughs> she better. <laughs> well, I'm going to cut this line right now. <laughs> I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay. I just want to really say that we are so um, proud of being associated with you. And wherever we see your face, so let me say I see your face. I'm like, that is our main man, Mr. So Trevor Noah. You took a picture with one of my cousins because it's doing OP in the UK. And I was like, yes, that is our boy. Oh, wow, so thank I'm, you. So we are so glad to have you home. Yeah. And we are following you all the way through. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate you, Raylene. We've got... Uh, uh, all the way from Rudaport, Muhammad Ali. Hey, Muhammad. Hey, How are oh. you doing, Trevor? Doing well, doing well. That name comes with a lot of pressure, eh? Dude. It does, it does. Huge amounts of pressure. Um, but it's an uh, honor speaking to you, sir. Thank I you think so much. When I think of a name, uh, Trevor, when I think of a name, Trevor, uh, I compare it to the great greats um, like George Lopez. Uh, my favorite. Oh, and, wow. That's uh, very kind. Russell Thank Peters. you. Thank you. Russell Peters. Oh. And obviously, you have your own style. Not so much flair like them, but uh, we've really been following your career and really respect what you have done. Thank you so uh, much. Thank all you. this time. We, we love your work. And uh, oh, I love your work. I keep on saying we. I love your work. And uh, keep it up, eh? Thank you uh, so much. I appreciate the moment. Thank you very much. My God, Clement, you know, for some reason, I thought uh, Trevor was you. Oh, my gosh, Trevor, I love you. Uh, I love your work. Oh, my gosh, I'm looking forward to this show. <laughs> Yo, man, Trevor, I love your work, my man. you the reason I started watching uh, stand-up comedy. Like, I've been following you since over the years, man. You're doing a beautiful job, and you're a great ambassador for South Africa. Keep representing Poyai. I feel I'm fit to sponsor. Keep doing the great job, Chaka. Away. This is Kumu from Yovo. Um, first of all, 
why is Trevor Noah so good at that intro? Like he's worked at 702 before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice to have you on the show, man, Trevor. Huge, huge fan here. Um, Ash and Clement, how do you bring Trevor Noah here the day after the public protector was impeached? Now we don't know if we must tell jokes on the show or if we're in a serious um, <laughs> condition right now. Yeah. But anyway, lovely show as always. Thank you. And by the way, Trevor didn't even practice that intro, eh? It's a natural like that. It just went in. Speaking of the country and the, and the public protector, how do you yes. feel about the state of, of this country right now? You know, it's... it's it's a really interesting question, and I've met many people who say the same thing to me. A lot of people will say to me, Trevor, this is the worst country in the world. Mm. Trevor, you so lucky you got out. Oh, this is the worst country, worst country. I go, first of all, I've never tried, nor have I ever considered getting out. You know, I move where my work takes me, mm. and my goal is to always be part of building up what I consider one of the best nations in the world. I think we should be careful in the language we use because it shapes how we perceive reality. This is not the worst country in the world. This is not even close to being the worst country in the world. This is a great country going through a terrible time. Mm. And I think there's a difference in that distinction. And I think it's really important to remember that. The reason it's important to remember that is because it then reminds you of where you want to go and where you can go. The only reason we are complaining, the only reason we're having issues, whether it's load shedding or whether it's corruption or whether it's talking about you know, inept politicians, etc., is because we have a standard that clearly we have remembered in moments in time. Mm. Otherwise, we wouldn't complain. Mm. You can't complain about not having you electricity if you never had electricity. Yeah. So that means we know we can get back to it. And so, you know, I've, I've, I'm, an, I'm an eternal optimist. I've been that in my life. I've been that, you know, in my family. I've been that, you know, for my country. And I think we have to push in that direction. It doesn't mean that we have to be delusional. It doesn't mean that we have to ignore what we're seeing. But I really think, I really think that we, we, we have to try to remember that at all costs. Because mm -hmm. if we give up and say the country is gone and we treat it as if it is gone, we then become part of the problem. And I honestly mean this on, on even the lowest level. You know, I think we, we take for granted how much on the ground each person is contributing to how a country feels. Yes, yeah. politicians and leaders are definitely defining a lot of it from the top. But we define a lot of it just in the street, walking, you know, driving our cars, being there for each other, the way we conduct ourselves, you know, in and amongst um, our neighborhoods and our, and, and our townships and our communities. I think that's, that's, that's something we should never let go of. And so it's definitely a tough time right now. Um, what do people ask you the most about this country? Th there was a time in Ofe we were talking about how it used to be, a, oh, Nelson Mandela. Yes. Um, yes. And then I realized recently in New York that it's, oh, I'm a piano. Yes. And then I realized also in New York that it's Trevor Noah. So every time people ask, where are you from? South Africa. Oh, Trevor Noah. Right. <laughs> That's been amazing. I, I won't lie. It really has been amazing. Right. What do you, so people know you're from South Africa. Yeah. What, what do they ask you the most about this country? You know, that, that's, that's been, you know, an interesting one is like people have so many misconceptions about South Africa. You know, some people obviously will ask you about, they'll go like, oh, what about the crime? And, you know, yeah. people will say, oh, I heard there's, you know, there's corruption and I heard this. But this is what I mean about like messaging, you know, mm. and, and that's why I'm very passionate about how we market South Africa. Is that why you're charging us 33 million? My man, can, can we talk about that? Dude! Can we talk about that? You know, guys, <laughs> honestly, Clement, and I mean this from the bottom of my, of my heart, I wish I had all the money that newspapers and tabloids say I have. Sometimes I read newspapers, then I'm like, guys, Nami, I want that money. Now I'm depressed. <laughs> because you now, have it. You, now you've told me about money that I don't have. Now I'm like, ah, oh, well, guys, I want that money. Now I'm depressed, honestly. And I, but, but I also think that that points to some of the messaging. So, you know, I, I woke up one day and they're like, Trevor Noah, SA Tourism, he's getting my, I said, guys, first of all, I'm not doing anything with SA Tourism. There's I'm no dealing, contract signed. No, I'm, guys, I'm dealing with private, this is a private body yes. of hotels and yeah. Airbnbs. and Because you know that coming out of COVID, South Africa has had the lowest rebound rate of yeah. any nation in the world that needs tourism as, as a big part of its GDP, mm. right? We cannot afford to not have tourists in this country. Mm. And so when you look at other countries that have bounced back to 90% of their previous capacity before COVID, South Africa, I think we're sitting at like 60%, 50, mm -hmm. 60%. Mm -hmm. that's, that's terrible for us. It affects jobs. It affects employment. It affects everything. 
You know, it affects our economy in a big way. And so I was approached by, it's like a private group, yeah. you know, where they go, hey, we are the hotels. We are the people who need to get people to come in. Can we talk about creating a campaign? And I said, yeah, I'd love to be the face. I mean, I helped Swiss tourism. So I was like, how can I not help my own country? Yeah. But then the irony in South <laughs> Africa is- Did you Swiss? No, no, no. <laughs> No, Swiss, Swiss is hard, eh? Yo, speaking Swiss is hard. I would have loved hard. to see that ad. Yo, like yeah. German, I can speak a little bit, but Swiss German is, is something crazy. else. But okay. yeah, but, but, it's, but it's one of those things where you, you realize, and I understand this, by the way, South Africans are so traumatized from corruption on every corner and every, like every topic we touch. Yeah. That everyone thinks everything is connected to corruption somewhere, somehow, yeah. in every shape or form. Even something that has nothing to do with the government. You know, mm. and now people are there. So Trevor, are you, are you part of Tumami now? Yeah. Then I'm like, guys, you get I, a tender? I have <laughs> nothing. There's no tender. I have nothing to do with this. Do guys, I can't work. That? I can't work for government because I also want to talk about government. Do you know what I mean? So when you come to my comedy shows, now all, sudden, now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, I can't speak, speak my mind because I'm worried about losing a tender. Yeah. I, I, never that. But here's the problem I have is. There is nothing wrong with you, even if it was, okay, SA tourism, let's put that aside, because there yes. are people who are mentioning the amount of, oh my God, 33 million rand. He's from South Africa. He could do this pro bono or for free. And we spoke about this on the show the other day. And like, this guy is a global superstar. He's got so much influence. And I bet he's even given us a discount on that 33 million rand. There's also I nothing. Didn't, and there's, no, there's first and foremost, guys, can we stop saying 33 million? Are you cool? You're making me depressed. So you're not 33 <laughs> million and rich in your pocket now. <laughs> I swear on my life, Clement, you're making me <laughs> depressed here. Yeah. It is not 33 million rand. It's not even close to 33 million rand. Yeah. So that's the first but thing. did you really give them a discount that's, that's, for whatever amount? That's, that's the first thing, yes. Mm. But secondly, you know, one thing I think we also need to work on as people, and, and this is something that we've we've sort of, I don't know where we got it from, you know, like when you'd be living, there would be this yeah. attitude sometimes where there would be one house where they would buy a car, yeah. you know, or something. Yeah. And now everyone comes to them and goes, ah, oh, cows tart, please, can you take us to macro? Hey, can you oh, take us? Dali. Hey, can you take? And now the person who owns the car goes, okay, but guys, are you gonna are you gonna pay? Then they're like, ah, why must we pay? Then you're like, because well, I paid to get the car. I'm working to get this thing. Do you know what I mean? And I think we should not live in a world where we go your work isn't valued at something. Exactly. Everyone's work should be valued at something. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, I also understand at the same time how sensitive South Africans can be because we look at where spending goes. Yeah. But this is where I go back to sensitivities. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember reading about the the, the Tottenham deal, you know, mm -hmm. the, the one billion rand SA mm -hmm. tourism, mm -hmm. which on the face of it looked crazy. But when I started reading into it, and again, I must put, I have no affiliations with SA Tourism. SA Tourism does not pay me anything. So I'm saying this as Trevor Noah by myself. Me, nah. I'm not, there's no government, anything that comes my way. Yeah. I mean, I send money to government. Government doesn't <laughs> send money to me. One thing I, I realized was, I was like, A, a billion rand sounds like a lot until you realize you're paying Tottenham in pounds and the exchange rate has hurt us. And then you look at Rwanda and their campaign that they launched with Arsenal. And you look at how initially it seemed like a crazy idea but now Rwanda's tourism has gone up something like 247%. You know what I mean? It's gone up. They, they, they're making hundreds of millions of dollars in tourism that they never got. Now the guerrilla sanctuaries are profiting from, like there is an element of us understanding and it's hard because you live in a country where every day you wake up and there's another politician who's stolen money. We are still gonna need to be in a country where there are deals that are made, there are contracts that are signed, there are things that are moved in order to get investment into the country. And so that's why I've said on my side, I do not take money from government. There's no tender, there's no, that'll never be a thing. But I do believe we need to push this country and we need to get people visiting it. Otherwise, we will just go further and further down a spiral where there is no money in this country. Yeah. Someone says, Jo, so Khoasa Trevor. Hey, Dima, no bolela Gucci English, man. He speaks better uh, than the English queen. In my view, he speaks perfectly. Please ask him, how did, how did he learn to speak this perfect English. Hey, it's <laughs> But you've always, I mean, your school has always have been like proper. <laughs> Gucci English. <laughs> oh, wow, I'm going to keep that. And real Gucci English. Gucci English. Not Eli. Gucci English. Go -ka -ka. Um, I think it's a long, it's a long standing tradition, Yama if, yeah. we, if we're honest about it. If you think, like, I mean, my grandfather, my grandmother, yeah. they their English was at a high level considering the lack of education, you know? 
and the, what they weren't afforded. Yeah. And then my mom carried on that tradition and she forced me to learn. And then my, I was lucky enough to go to great schools. Mm. So, you know, um, it's one of those. In fact, I'm working on the other things. Yeah, Sikhua is, is it's all good and well, but then, you know, it's also yeah. got to be something where you go do, like... Do you parle français? Parle français? Yeah. No, je ne parle pas français. Uh, yeah. Je parle un petit de français. Un petit? Yeah, oh, un petit. okay, c'est bon, c'est bon. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> Sebou means good, like that's oh, good. good. Good, good. Oui, oui, that's oui. Oui, oui, oui. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to go back to the calls shortly. Here's a question I've always wanted to ask you. Yes. Do you think you were accepted from the onset when you made Hollywood? Because um, I often wonder how, no. whether or not it was lonely for you. Like when, no. when you were arriving, were there people who still had doubts about this young man? Yeah. Yes, he's Definitely. talented, Definitely. but we're not sure. Definitely. Was it lonely? Definitely. And I think there, there, are, there are two things to understand in answering this question. Mm. First of all, people talk about Hollywood. <laughs> you know, people say, Ah, oh, Trevor, you are in Hollywood. As if now, Kizula, you know, Kizula zone four in Hollywood. I don't, I don't live, like, first of all, I've never lived in Hollywood. Do you get what I'm saying? I work in New York. And so Hollywood has come to mean two, two things. Yes, there is a physical place in Los Angeles that is called Hollywood. Mm. That's an actual location where many people who work in Hollywood live. And Hollywood is the industry as well. So when we talk about Hollywood, that's a, you know what I mean? We've got, to, we've got to think of that in two ways. But to answer your question, yes, it was very lonely. Mm. You know, it was lonely because I came in very much as an outsider. People were complaining even about my accent. You know, this guy says words funny. You know, now, now I'm saying aluminium. Then like, aluminium? <laughs> then I'm like, guys, it's al aluminium as well. Then they're like, aluminium, say it properly. You know, so now you, you, it's very lonely. And, and, and some people are even waiting to see how it's going to go before they endorse you. Yeah. You know, that's why somebody like Kevin Hart is someone I'm always grateful to. Mm. I couldn't get a single guest for my show when we were starting. When it started. Yo, Clement. I beg for you, I love Oh, people were just like, well, we're not coming. Like, who are you? Yeah, people were like, ah, we're not going to take a chance. Who's this guy? Why would we go on the show? And then we contacted Kevin Hart and Kevin was like, yeah, I'll come. Kevin's like, I love this guy. I've seen his comedy. I love what he does. I know that people here don't know him. Oh. I think he's a star. Kevin came, was the first guest oh, on my show. That's beautiful, man. Put his neck on the line there. And forevermore, I was like, I will always be grateful to this guy because he did something that many people wouldn't. Many people came to the show later. Oh, you're great. Oh my God, fantastic. Oh, Trevor, I, no. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but you know what I mean? Because a lot of people, you know, they, they just want to be on trains that are going in the right direction. They don't want to be there when your train seems like it's not moving. Mm -hmm. So so I think it, it was lonely initially, but what it helped me to, to realize is that you've got to make sure your friends are your real friends. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I go up with my friends, I go down with my friends. I like you know. That. So I mean, now this morning when I was struggling to get to Anele's show yeah. on on you know <laughs> there I am yeah. on Highfelt, but it's an, it, I know Anele. Anele's texting me and now I'm telling her like we'll phone and we'll talk and but her and I have been through everything yeah. from yeah. from nothing yeah. to where we are now and we hope to carry on that journey together. But mm. we are friends, friends, mm. you know, and so. That's 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 honestly been one of my greatest joys. You know, David Kibuka, many people remember him from Pure Munati show yeah. and from LNN. Mm. David Kibuka is one of the core pillars of helping me build what I was doing at The Daily Show. He left South Africa with me to go and build that thing. And now he's still there, part of it, even after I'm gone. Yeah. And so I think those things helped me understand, yes, it was lonely in one way, but it was good because you don't want to build a village of fake people. Yeah. You know, you would rather have a small community that you know is genuinely there for who you are, not what you're doing or what you're achieving. Oh, wow. Wisdom right there. Let's go to Khalil in four ways. Hey, Khalil. Hey. Oh, wow, this is unbelievable. Trevanua. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I, I, I'm, I'm such a huge fan. Quick story. Playhouse in Durban. That's racist. I went to watch the show of yours five times. Wow! Took my parents, took my friends, took my wow, uh, Khalil. Cousins, thank you. That's 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 insane. It was, it was just, and you know what? You paved the way for local comedy. You paved the way for your Louisa Martinez, your Dylan Oliphant, your Scar Pizzade, and all. Um, you know the list goes on and on. Mo Jack Lahoku. I mean, Trevor, what you've done for comedy is absolutely unbelievable. Thank We're going you. to a show on Friday. My partner and myself are going to, to Pretoria on Friday. We can't wait. Thank we you. Can't I can't wait. I'll see you in minutes. Pretoria. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. John in Midrand. Thank, thank you so much for that. Hey, John. 
Hi, hello. Sure, sure, John. Go ahead. Hi, Trevor. How yes. are you? How are you, John? Oh, I'm so happy to talk to you. I'm actually kind of wait to see your show tonight. Ah, <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, tonight. I think tonight is the last show where we have a few yeah, tickets, yeah, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, you got yeah. one of them. Well done. Well done, John. Two, two. Well, two of them. Okay, two of them. Two of them. I love it. <laughs> And I must say, my favorite moment for me, I'm going to come to Trevor Noel, how actually you say how your dad come out with that ever. I mean, I actually absolutely love that. Thank you. And the second of all is actually when you met up with the last line. I mean, that, I just went insane. So, ah, thank you. Keep it up and, uh, and really, really can keep on doing the, I mean, the good work and uh, some of us will support you forever. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you for that. And and can I just add? Yeah. Can I just add to the to the previous caller? I, I appreciate what you said, but honestly and truly, I, I I don't think I did a lot for comedy. I think comedy did a lot for me. You know, the road I was lucky. Yes, Dylan Olifant and Mojack Lehawk and all these guys. That's just like the next generation. Yeah. But my thing was literally paved by other comedians. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I was the one watching Boka Lidija on stage. I was the one watching Bo David Kao on stage. Yeah. I was the one watching these guys. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's 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 always about just like paying it forward to the next generation. I don't understand. I mean, you are so your humility. You know, I said Bongani said to me, uh, Bongani being our colleague who does seven on two breakfast. He, yes. When I said Trevor Noah is coming, he said, Oh my God, I met Trevor at the airport one day, and I had met him some time ago, and he came to say hi. And Bongani was scared to come say hi to you because you are this superstar and you went and said hi. And what the listeners don't know, I mean, when we were off, um, off air, you were congratulating me on things. And I'm like, but this guy, right? Like, who cares and still but I feels mean, the humility but, to... But that's how, honestly, that's how I grew up. That's how we grew up. One of my, f- one of my greatest joys, and it's something that I, I, I always wished for South Africa to somehow magically maintain is can we upgrade and can we increase you know the the, the value and the commodity and the everything of Ilokshin but can we can we maintain the culture that it that it gave us yeah do you, do you get what I'm saying I got you man it didn't matter who was driving past where it didn't mm. matter if someone had a new job mm. or, or someone had done something or someone needed mm. help carrying groceries or somebody but we were together you couldn't throw a party Ilokshin by you didn't yourself? even need to invite us. You didn't invite anybody. No. You just, you put up a tent. Sieza. Sieza. Sfigil. Exactly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I think for me, honestly, honestly and truly, it's yeah. it's not something that I think of or I try and practice. I just go like, no, it's, yeah. I think anybody's delusional if they think they're just building things by themselves. It's like, okay, well, I mean, I, I, I'm happy for you to live that life, but yeah. there'll be a rude awakening at some point. Trevor Noah. This has been amazing, man. I appreciate you for making time to be here with us for an hour. Thank you. Um, and we we really are inspired by you. you thank you so much. Us. We love you. You are just an incredible man. And thank you for your humility and no, the course, wisdom. I, I really appreciate you. Thank you. For making time. So thank you. Yabom. And thank you to the listeners. Thank yeah. you to the callers. Now, what a great way to start your day with voice notes telling you you're amazing. Right? I'm, you must send me all of those so I can just save them. Every day when I'm <laughs> when I'm having those tough mornings where I'm not I'm not sure just what I'm play. doing in life. Just Trevor, press play. You Trevor. Are amazing. Trevor, we love you. No, thank you. I really appreciate it. To everyone who supports me, yeah. to everyone who has supported me, people who can come to shows, people who can't, people who watch on, whatever it is, yeah. thank you very much. As South Africans, we're doing this thing, guys. Thank you. Thank you, brother. You're with Clement Maniatella. 702.